Hi there guys, welcome back to today's training on common mistakes that email marketers commit, which is part two. If you have missed part one, you can always refer over to the link in the description box below this video. And at the same time, if you want to know how I do up my complete email marketing setup, you can always refer to the link in the description box below this video as well. So without further ado, let's jump straight to my computer and commence today's training. As you guys can see over here, this is the part two of the common mistakes that email marketers commit. So continuing from part one, mistake number four that I observe is the improper usage of rotators. Now, when it comes to getting sales via email marketing, there's this thing called the minimum hops in order to see conversions. Of course, it also depends on the price point of the offer that you are trying to promote. The higher the price point, necessarily the higher the number of hops you need to have. However, if you're promoting low ticket offers, my suggestion would be to at least get 150 to 200 hops before you determine whether this particular sales page can convert. Secondly, when you're using rotators, you must understand that every time when you use a rotator, it will reduce the number of clicks to your hops. Let me explain to you in a very simple manner. If you look at the screen over here, scenario one, let's say you are purchasing solo as clicks, all right? And usually the minimum that I'll suggest you guys to purchase is at least 300 clicks. Again, I have left all the different traffic sources that I purchased my solo ads from via the links in the description box below this video. So let's say you purchase 300 clicks and you push them into your squeeze page in order to collect the information, like for example, their first name and their email addresses, most importantly. Now, assuming that you have opt-in rate of 50%, which is pretty healthy, all right, pretty good, actually, when it comes to squeeze page conversion rate, and that's where you're able to get 150 leads. Now, based on 150 leads, Let's say if you use a rotator to rotate between offer A and offer B. What's going to happen is, out of these 150 leads, only 75 of them will be able to observe offer A and 75 of them observe offer B. So with that in mind, do you think you can even get any form of sales? And even if you do, it's really purely based on luck. But when it comes to business, of course, we don't base on luck, you see. So, which is why if you use a rotator, make sure that at the end of the day, the number of views that you can see in individual offers is at least between 150 to 200 views. All right. So in this case, this usage of rotator will definitely fail. Scenario number two, let's say you're doing your email marketing campaigns and you have a total of 500 emails. Whenever you send out one email broadcast, let's take your click-through rates as 1%. So with 1% click-through rates, 50 of them will click on your emails and that's where they will start to see the offer. Again, if you use the rotator based on this particular scenario, only 25 of them will see offer 1 and 25 of them will see offer 2. Now, even if you were to broadcast 3 times a day with 1% click-through rates for every one of your email, you will at most have 75 views for offer 1, 75 views for offer 2. So this is just going to slow down your entire testing. All right. So remember, not every time you have to use a rotator and it really depends on end of the day, based on your own calculation, how many of them will see the respective offers that you put into the rotator. Let's now talk about mistake number five, not split testing your squeeze page. When it comes to your squeeze page, your opt-in rate will affect your cost per lead. At the same time, are you going to use a lengthy or a simplified squeeze page? Remember that when it comes to using a squeeze page, there's only one objective to gather the information of your traffic. Not everyone will input their information. Because once upon a time, I used to have a coaching student who asked me this question. Why isn't the squeeze page conversion 100%? Because it defies human psychology. Not everyone seeing a website, first time when they see this particular page, no matter how good it can be, will give you the information. With that in mind, when you're designing your squeeze page, end of the day, they have only one objective, like what I mentioned just now, gather the information. And this will impact this thing called the opt-in rate. So for example, if you have 10 people visited your squeeze page, five of them left down their information and proceed to the next step of your funnel, that is where your opt-in rate is 50%. Now, what I mean by opt-in rate will affect your cost per lead. For example, if you purchase from a solo ad vendor 300 clicks, every click costs 50 cents. That means your entire cost of this traffic purchase is $150. So based on 300 clicks that move into your squeeze page, let's say your opt-in rate is 50%. That will mean that you have gathered 150 leads based on a total cost of $150. Now, 
which means your cost per lead will be $1. Let's say, based on the same scenario, you purchase 300 clicks at 50 cents each, your cost of traffic is $150, but your opt-in rate is only 20%. So what does this mean? This will mean, based on 300 clicks that move into your squeeze page, you are only gathering 60 leads. And 60 leads, based on $150 per chase, that will mean that your cost per lead is almost $2.50. So can you see that the higher the conversion rate of a squeeze page, the lower your cost per lead? That is also the reason why we need to split test different squeeze pages to make sure that the one that we are using is giving us the optimal conversion rate. Secondly, when it comes to using a squeeze page, one of the very common questions that I always get asked is, are we supposed to use a simple squeeze page or a lengthy one? It really depends on the offer that you are promoting. If your offer is a low ticket offer, there's no point for you to come out with a lengthy squeeze page. It will just reduce your conversion rate tremendously. A lot of people think that by doing a very lengthy squeeze page, by giving as much information as possible about the particular product, it will actually enhance the opt-in rate. That is not true. Remember, people nowadays do not have the time to really go through every single detail in your sales page or even in your squeeze page or bridge page. All they want is, come on, give me straight to the point, what exactly is this thing all about? Or even best, come up with something that arouses my curiosity I will give you the information and just let me proceed on with your funnel. So remember, if your cost of this particular product that you're trying to promote is low ticket, go for something that is very simple, all right? Simple as possible. If your cost of this product is a high ticket offer, that is where your squeeze page has to put in even more information. Mistake number six, when to use a bridge page. Now, what is the purpose of a bridge page as well as does it really mean that when you reduce the hops, you will get higher conversions? This is how a typical funnel will look like. You have the traffic over here that move into your squeeze page. Now, usually after the squeeze page, we channel them straight to the sales offer page. The bridge page exists between your squeeze page and your sales offer page. The purpose of a bridge page is a pre-sell page. Why is a pre-sell page important for certain offers that you're trying to promote? Does it really mean that if you are promoting a high ticket offer, you need a bridge page, low ticket, you don't need a bridge page? It does not work that way. It depends a lot on the kind of nature of the sales page. If the nature of the sales page itself is convincing enough to your audience, whereby they will explain what kind of product it is, the price point, the testimonials, the kind of uh, refund guarantees, you know, so and so forth, there's really no need for you to create any form of bridge page. But if the particular sales page is not doing a very good job in terms of explaining all these details, that is where you need to have a bridge page. Now, does the insertion of a bridge page definitely increase your sales conversion? Yes and no. Because if you're using a bridge page wrongly, not only will it reduce your sales conversion, you are actually deterring the traffic away from proceeding to the next particular funnel. One thing you need to understand, if your funnel is too complicated with too many steps in between, every single step is going to reduce the potential traffic from moving on towards your funnel. If you had just collected information on the squeeze page and direct them to the sales offer page, you could have gotten more hops. But if you put a bridge page in between, end of the day, the traffic that finally proceeds to the final step of your funnel is going to reduce. However, if you use the bridge page properly, even if the hops have reduced, but because you have given more in-depth information or I would say more thorough explanation of what exactly is the product all about when they proceed to the final step to reach the sales page, even if your hops were to reduce, your sales conversion will go up. So end of the day, are you going to use a bridge page? It really depends on the nature of the sales offer page, not the offer itself.